at a prophetic dateline, you know, God just has orchestrated the show, Mike. I think so. Yeah, we have so, yeah. our dear, dear friend James Gall on with us. And we're going to talk about his bio a little bit because he is doing extraordinary things. And you'll see after we introduce him how it fits in with actually a dream mm -hmm. hot off the press, you know. Uh, so, Mike, you want to. Yeah, and you, you and James are like bookends. <laughs> no, it's in the spirit. You know, you guys are like bookends. There's such a similar anointing on your lives and although james is much more of a dreamer uh -huh. than you sure. but still yeah. there's the similarities are amazing yeah and uh, so but i you know when we were talking to james cindy and one of the reasons i'm so excited about today is when when he's doing some new innovative things yeah and, and i think about this like James and you and I, we're not the youngest chickens in the yard. <laughs> but James is like, he's just flowing with the, losing this creativity that the prophets have been talking about. James, you know that the, they've been talking about this tremendous release of creativity. Yes. And so it would be proper that the prophets lead in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and indeed, you're going to do that. Now, all of you who are watching, listen carefully because there's some things that are going to be yeah. loose today that I think will be having application for your lives in a special way. Yeah, and I want to give a little bit of an intro because we can assume everybody all over the world uh, has seen all the shows. They're lost. We are. <laughs> yes, right. Okay. <laughs> this is true. But, uh, you know, uh, James has a new endeavor called Gall Ideation. Mm -hmm. And it and uh, this is very important because, like, he, he just did a course on how to write a book. You know, many of you maybe say, well, e course. yeah, yeah, you know? right. You know, yeah. many of you are saying, well, you know, God has called me to write a book. I don't know how. And so this is so innovation, G-O-L-L ideation.com. And he, uh, courses on life languages. He's got a music label now. And so I think this all is a good segue. In fact, his book, The Prophet, he have that to hold that. Yeah. I want to just, yeah, this is a very good book to read, you know, that will help you understand some of the things that we're going to talk about today. Yeah. He has all other books on dreaming, which I think would be oh, yeah. good. And you can get the profit by going to jamesgall.com. Right. Yeah, right. jamesgall.com. That's, that's different than uh, gallideation.com. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if this is so interesting, Cindy, like this has all blossomed in his life in yeah. the last 10 years, maybe yeah. less, oh, fewer less. years than well, that. Well, we, yeah, we've been really close for 22, 23, maybe 25 years yep. now. Yeah, but uh, last night, yep. you had a dream. Yes. Absolutely. Shall we lead off with that? Yeah, let's talk about it. Sure, that. we can. Hey, Father, thank you for this time together. Mm -hmm. And we're just asking that truly that you be the lead of this prophetic dateline prophetic perspective together and we're grateful now holy spirit touch every viewer in jesus name you know last night obviously anticipation of us going to be together i pray that the lord does speak to me through dreams and visions for every assignment that i have and god is always faithful to give me dreams, visions, nuances, impressions. And so last night, wow, did I ever have a steaming, I mean, like hot off the griddle dream. So it was two people was in this dream. It was Cindy Jacobs and myself. And as our mutual friend, John Hamill says, you cannot make this stuff up. <laughs> and it was it was electrifying. One of the tools that I use in interpretation of dreams is what was the overriding emotion in the dream? This one was destiny. This mm -hmm. dream was supercharged with the destiny of God, but on to the dream. You and I were bookends, and we were prophesying back and forth, but about what? the Joseph anointing and the mm. Deborah company back and forth. Oh my goodness. We were back and forth prophesying about the need, 
the timing, the relevancy, the necessity for now, not just in the future. It was, this is the time for the Josephs now and the Deborah company now. This was not a dream. This was what was interesting. Not just future. This was not a dream about the past. This was urgent. This was now. And you and I were in tears because of the urgency of the hour. And I was saying, Cindy, you've raised up the Debras about the past, but no, it's the Debras for now. And then you were saying to me, James, it's time now for the Joseph company now, and you must help raise up the Josephs for today. Mm. And this was about, as in the book of Genesis, the Joseph dreamers, but it was about raising up those who have understanding about economics, about those who have understanding about not being fearful about turbulent times, but who would have wisdom and counsel, and get this, for those in authority who would have the word of the Lord to speak to those in authority to have a stable word to release during turbulent times. And Mm. we were like encouraging one another back and forth about a sphere of authority and encouraging one another. Now, this dream wasn't just about you and me. This was a dream about what's needed in this hour. Wow. You know, uh, very interestingly, uh, uh, I was just up with uh, Dr. Bill Winston in uh, Chicago area. And I had prophesied three years ago, or maybe I think it was three, that he would build a Joseph Business School. Wow. And when we were up there recently, we toured this new school that he built. Oh my. And it's so beautiful. And I mean, it's like like Wall Street talking about stocks or, or you know, just yeah. the full spectrum entrepreneurship. And, you know, uh, and the Lord would say, yes. I am going to press my children. Yes into understanding the Joseph anointing. That's right. And the Lord would say to you, know this, that even as I raised up Joseph in Egypt, I am raising up many. Yes. Right now, listen to this. Joseph's, of course, they can be men or women, you know, but I am raising up Joseph's. Deborah led to war and, you know, she stood for her nation, but Joseph had the economic structures and the Lord just says, I'm going to show you how to be a Goshen. I'm going to, I will show you how, says the Lord, to have structures and think in a way out of the box that you have never, ever thought about before so what what are the, is your takeaway about joseph genesis 37 through about 30 45 yes T- talk to us about this well i believe that in this sense it's like he was mocked about being a dreamer so hmm. he was a dreamer out of season and yet hmm. later the one who was mocked about being a dreamer he was then um heralded as being a dreamer by the very people who mocked him. Now, Mm. Joseph had to learn wisdom on how to carry his dream. Now, but Mm -hmm. what I want to say here is on his dreams, though, his dreams in part were about how to prosper in lean times. Mm. So this is what I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to declare right now in the name of Jesus that the Lord is raising up forerunners so that we will have wisdom ways so that even in the potential of lean times, we will prosper in lean times. Fear not, the Holy Spirit says. Fear not, my people, because Will I not take care of you? 
Even as Jesus said, look at the lilies of the field. Do I not take care of them? Will I not take care of you? I am preparing the way, and I will give you understandings on how to protect that which I have already given you, but I am also going to give you witty inventions. I am going to give you understandings on how to prosper. Will I not, ahead of time, give you understandings? And I believe, Cindy and Mike, that the Holy Spirit is releasing even right now, because I had this dream for this mm -hmm. broadcast. Mm -hmm. So there are those who are tuning in, and there are those who are going to share this broadcast with others in a very strategic appointments. So I say right now, dreamers come forth. I say, Joseph, dreamers come forth. And I also say, wisdom ways in how to handle prophetic administration. And you say, but that doesn't work together. The prophetic and administration, those are like two opposite ends of the spectrum. But I say, yes, the opposites are going to come together in Jesus' name. Mm. And there is prophetic, it's apostolic prophetic administration is coming together for the days in which we live. Amen. Mm. You know, James, as we've been sitting here and talking about this whole bookend thing, it reminded me, Cindy, of when we were in the plaza in front of the Wailing Wall years ago, huh. and it was like uh, a year of jubilee, the first year of jubilee being celebrated in Israel since the time of Christ, because wow. you know, it's only every 50 years, and, and after right. the Lord was crucified within 50 years, there was a great scattering and stuff, and set, the, set this up. On one side of that plaza, they had a platform with, with rabbis, yes. with the scrolls. The On the other side, of the of the uh, plaza, they had another platform with rabbis, and so what, here you had antiphonally bookends. Oh, yes. Antiphonally, they began to release mm -hmm. this. Uh, really, what was the word of the Lord for them, which is Messiah come. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're seeing right now is that antiphonal call yes. that is actually releasing something in the spirit. You're doing it. You begin to speak it already. You're prophesying yes. from your side of uh, the release of the creativity, and you have a right to do that because you have right. been modeling this not. creativity. So mm -hmm. what you have, you have the ability to impart. That's right. And Cindy's by the same thing. So oh, yeah. now we have both of this. Those uh -huh. of you who are watching, those who have an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit's saying. He's yeah. saying, I'm wanting to release, even on this program, yeah. a new dimension of the Spirit for you, just as James has modeled that, and yeah. this creativity that's being birthed, it's like a, a, a renaissance that he is experiencing right. in his own life. God's yeah. going to be doing that for you. Yeah. 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 I thought you were going to talk about the fact that they... They found that bomb. They th no, you know. no, that was, that was, you know, okay, that, it was exciting anyway. Yes. But, um, you know, this, this one thing you said is very interesting. You said the forerunners yes. and just this morning, as I was praying, the Lord mm -hmm. said, call up the forerunners once again. Yes. So you want to talk into that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, obviously, uh, one of the greatest prophets was John the Baptist. And John the Baptist went before to prepare the way for Jesus, the mm -hmm. first coming. Mm -hmm. And before mm -hmm. the second coming of the Messiah Jesus, there is the forerunner anointing that is released to prepare the way. Mm -hmm. And so, and also before then, every great move of the Holy Spirit. There are those, the Micah 2, 13, 14, the breakers who go before to break open the way. So we could mm -hmm. call them forerunners. But mm -hmm. what do they do? They go before to break open the way so that the king of glory can pass before that others then can break through. 
So the Lord mm -hmm. always has forerunners, the first ones who go before to open the way that others then. It's just like an invention or entrepreneurs. They are like the first ones to break like the four minute mile in the race or whatever, you know, or like the light bulb. And then there's then creation or the World Wide web. And then it gets greater and greater and greater and faster speed. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we are speaking forth forerunners in creativity, in entrepreneurship, and whether it, oh my, I'm about to say something that whether it is in currency, whether it is in currency, or whether it is in, in a digital marketing, whether it is in branding, I say we, the Christians, are not going to be the tail bearers this time, but rather we are called to be the head and not the tail. And too often we are behind on the learning curve, and then we are always playing catch up. But I declare this time we are doing catch up, but we are also God is anointing some who are going to lead the way in different industries. And I speak this anointing right now in the name of Jesus. And just like I am on an enormous learning curve, but I have just like recorded in Ocean Way Studio. And I am now an A-list singer, recording <laughs> artist. I just recorded in the top recording studio in Nashville, Tennessee. Folks, that's crazy. It's amazing. That is where it's not Christian artist. It is where the top artists of the world record. I just recorded there. That's amazing. That's a breakthrough. And just like in different areas, I am venturing out. Well, I'm only me, but I am doing this for the sake of creating an updraft, you can get caught up in someone else's updraft. It's just another illustration. So I just say, let's get caught up it together. Let's go together. Wow. Let's wow. go together. Let's be a Deborah company. And I hear a rumor that there's also going to be a men's. So maybe it's Deborah and Barack. Come on now. Come on now. I think it's Deborah it and, Joseph. and Joseph. I think. Yeah, well, I it is. the word of the Lord. There it is. There it is. It's Deborah <laughs> yeah. and Joseph's. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. And it's Deborah and Joseph's running together for such a time as this. There it is. There it is. Well, actually, some of you may not understand what he's talking yeah, well, about. Yeah, we just but, talking about But right. in July, we, we, have, we have our annual Deborah's United. And we've done this actually for many, many years. James' wife was one of our founders of this uh, before she went to be with Jesus. And uh, she was part of our founder circle. But um, this year we said, well, let's invite the men. But we kept saying, well, what are we going to call it? What are we going to call it? And we just got it, Joseph's. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. And uh, we just oh. did a big out of the box conference. It was by uh, invitation. We're not marketplace even, conference. yeah, marketplace. We're not even putting it out, but it was so innovative i wish i was there. i mean yeah people actually were kind of their minds were blown at yeah. how futuristic what god showed us mm -hmm. you know and so i i really think listen if you're listening to this today and your spirit inside is just going crazy just and it should be yeah <laughs> those who have an ear to hear yeah jumping up and down yeah. okay listen let me contextualize this yes i just read in the news that we are have the highest inflation rate yes. mm -hmm. since about 1981 40 years 40 yeah 40 years or yeah 40 years uh plus you know whatever and so um things things are not good in the u.s i and i'm sure other nations are the same you're feeling the effects of the war in ukraine right. and you know there's you know some difficult times so the lord yes. is trying to talk to you 
Yes. You know, we can't be lazy. Okay. Mm -hmm. We know. And another word the Lord gave me right before the 2008 crash is there shall be no more business as usual. There will be no more business as usual, but sometimes it takes pressure for us to get out of that, that, uh, that um, groove we have, you know, or, or, or that slot where we see each other. I mean, like 10 years ago, probably James, you wouldn't have thought of yourself oh, no. as an A-list singer that's no, recording no, in no, this, no, or would no. you be doing e-courses, mm, but yeah. you know how to be a forerunner. You know how to think clearly. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I think this is important. And, and he, not only that, he had to create new structures new structures yeah. new right. structures for a new season that's right i want to go back to this forerunner thing for just a second because yep. it's so important joseph was a forerunner mm-hmm. yes. yes he did not realize it until later in life because he recognized that even though he went through all of these trials to uh, finally ascend to the position that god gave him yes. in egypt when his brothers came he yes. said to them, you meant this for, for me for evil, evil, but God foresaw mm-hmm. what was going to be happening in the future, and he sent me ahead of you right. so that there would be a preparation, and basically, I became your safety net because right. I was your forerunner, That's right. and that's why you're not starving to death, is because God sent me ahead, and right. so listen, this is something really important for you because... Right. Where you are today, be aware that God has been preparing you through your life for this season. That's right. Because with this creativity that's being released, that's right. You have been a forerunner and you just didn't know it. That's right. You know, something I took some notes earlier where we were chatting, you were talking about the dreamer. Yes. And that he was mocked at first That's as right. being a Joseph dreamer. Talk That's about right. that a little bit. Yes. And obviously, he opened wide his mouth too soon. So he didn't have the wisdom to begin with to carry the gift. And often that is the case that we learn wisdom and character along the path to carry the gift. But thank God that we do learn. Later, his very brothers come to him, use the very sentence that they used in mocking, and later they come as a statement of compliment, and they say, behold, here's that dreamer. And I want to say to some of you out there that you have even done self-criticism or you have suffered from others criticizing you because you have felt like a child untimely born or others have criticized you. And I just want to say no. I just want to say no to self-criticism. I don't want to say no to the accuser of the brethren. And I just want to say to you, you were born for such a time as this. And I want to say, behold, Here is a dreamer for such a time as this, and you are needed, you are valued, and you and your gift are perfect for right now. Behold a Deborah, behold a Joseph, and we need you, the body of Christ needs you, and not only that, the world needs what you are carrying for such a time as this. I mean, that really, uh, you know, is is giving substance to people. I want to prophesy there's someone watching and you have lost everything. You literally, you could be a refugee or it could be you're a business person and you've just had to declare bankruptcy. Things look bad, but the Lord just wants to say you are coming back from this. Yes. in a way that will be a testimony the world will hear. And uh, I see somebody actually you lost your house. And the Lord said, oh, no, there are more houses in your future. This is a setback, but it is not your final act. 
That's says right. the Lord, and, and God is going to use you in a great way. In fact, the Lord would say, even to the Ukrainian diaspora, yeah. I am going to use Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deposit you in different parts of the world, says right. the Lord, in this scattering. And what Satan meant for evil, I'm going to work for good for you. Mm -hmm. But the nations need the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians mm -hmm. are incredibly gifted, talented right. people you know, as are the Russians, you know, but God is going to use you in a way that, that the nations will look back and say, oh no, you came as a refugee, but we needed you. We needed you. I know a top, I just talked to a wonderful prophet from Ukraine that is actually going to have refugee status um, in California. And, and uh, so I can see this maneuvering that the Holy Spirit is doing, just like Joseph was betrayed by his brothers, just like, you know, Joseph was hurt. The Lord just says to you, I have an overarching plan. I have something I'm going to do that is so beyond what you can understand right now. Right. The Lord says, this didn't catch me by surprise. Yeah. Even the evil of man doesn't catch right. God by surprise. And you might say, well, we know that Satan is on a rampage. He's come down with great wrath, knowing his time is short. But the Lord says, I'm going to specially gift the Ukrainians with an anointing of creativity. Yeah. I'm going to give you forerunner ideas and others as well who've gone through difficult times. You want to jump into that, James? Now, I just want to say that uh, we have a mutual friend, um, Rabbi Boris, and I just right. bless him right now in the name of Jesus. I'm behind the scenes, you know, and, and, and this is uh, safe to say. I just bless him right now in the name of Jesus and for his strong faith. And I just say there is rich faith in many of the Ukrainian people and in many of the Russian people of faith. And we just say there is a redemptive purpose of God that is yet to come forth. And there is a going to be a moving in the this diaspora, and there will be a multiplying of messianic congregations as a result in Europe. And there will also be fulfilling of ancient prophecy out of the Old Testament of Aliyah, of returning of Jewish people, even into the homeland of Israel, that would not have happened without the pressure cooker that is now occurring. So in a hard way, we can say all things ultimately do work together for good for those who have been love God and called according to his purpose. So we strengthen and we bless all of the believers in Russia and in the recurring. And we thank you, God. And we just say also to all of the people right now, do not fear, but rather be filled with a spirit of courage and boldness for such a time as this. Yeah, just before, you know, we're, we're, uh, our time is coming to an end, but tell them about that spirit of fear, you know, when you study that, that's a really good point. Yeah. You had a dream, yeah, <laughs> another I, dream, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had this amazing encounter. It takes place at Ambassador Auditorium in Pasadena, California. I feel like I'm an Old Testament prophet. I actually felt like I was Isaiah and the holiness of God. I'm enwrapped in it. And I'm standing there alone, and I have this scroll. And then all of a sudden, Cheon appears at my right side. You appear on my left side. I enroll this ancient scroll, and calligraphy appears, and it reads, God has not given us a spirit of fear. And then we start pronouncing this. I wake up out of the dream, and all of a sudden, I have a knowing that the word fear there, I didn't know this in the natural. All of a sudden, I know that the word fear there is not the typical word, P-H-E-R-O, fear, but it's a different Greek word, and that's all I know. Then I had to go do research, and I find out that it's the Greek word, adelio. It's only used twice in the entire New Testament, and what it means is this. God has not given us the spirit of a coward or cowardice. 
but God has given us the spirit of power and love and a sound mind. So in this dream, I am by an apostle on one side, a general prophet, you on the other side, and apostles and prophets in agreement, and we come against the spirit of passivity and timidity, but the spirit of being a coward in the body of Christ. And we release the opposite spirit, and we release the spirit of boldness. And I did not know, but the Holy Spirit knew, and he instructed me that this was a different Greek word. It's a dalio only used twice there in 2 Timothy 1, 7, and in the book of Revelation, where it says, liars and cowards are thrown into the lake of fire. Oh, my Jesus. So we have some repenting to do, but I'm here to say God has not given us the spirit of a coward. And so we release together the spirit of boldness and courage for such a time as this. Wow. Well, I tell you, this has been a God-ordained, amazing show. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just had this sensing that, <laughs> um, you ever seen a, a, a bold little dog who chases cars and chases <laughs> trucks and stuff like this? And, and what the Lord was, I think it was the Lord telling me that, that some of you are going to be like that dog that was chasing an 18 wheeler. You'd always wanted to go. You don't want a little, a little mini Cooper. You want to go after the big thing. And so you've, here's the deal. You're about to catch it. You're yeah. going to catch an 18 wheeler. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. So here you have the boldness. Now the Lord is going to show you how to, uh, what to do with this huge amount of creativity that's going to flood you. Yeah. You know, you've received it, you caught it. Okay. You've now caught what you were pursuing and you have no idea the mm -hmm. impact that it's going to have on your life. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. You're coming into an amazing season. Amen. Yeah. Final thoughts, James. Oh, it is such a delight to be together. And this is what the Bible says. The B I B L E where two or three agree that is the word symphonio where two or three agree together he is in our midst and so jesus is right there with you right now and there's nothing better than having jesus on your side and he is going before you because he is the forerunner in our lives. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, if you uh, are not signed up for the generals, uh, go to generals.org and sign up for our newsletter. You'll get the words of encouragement and um, you will find out about the Deborahs and the Josephs that's yeah. coming in July. I can't remember exactly what the dates are. Maybe the 12th through 15th here in Dallas area, the 14th through the 16th. Yeah. And so you want to come for that. And then we have, uh, our global summit that will be in November oh. and James is part of oh, our, our prophets round table, of course. And, uh, so go to uh, jamesgall.com yeah, and to get you. the book, The yeah. Prophet, yes. because there are certain things you need in this season, and that's going to be a real blessing for you. And again, it's gall, ideation, I-D-E-A-T-I-O-N.com. If you would like to write a book at that course yeah. or learn about life languages or hear yeah. his wonderful singing. Uh -huh. And so thank you, James, for being a part yeah. of us. It has been so amazing, and we'll see you really soon. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. God bless you. We love you. Thank you.